Welcome to Unit 13, uh, Guided Practice for Your Test Remediation. Uh, we're defining the following terms. A nuclear reaction is a reaction that involves the nuclei changing by splitting apart or combining protons and neutrons. Uh, nuclear fission is large nuclei that split into two smaller nuclei. Nuclear fusion, the two smaller nuclei that stick together to make one large nuclei. Half-life, the time it takes for half of a radioactive sample to decay. Alpha decay occurs when an alpha particle, a helium nuclei, or nucleus is ejected from a large unstable nucleus. Beta decay occurs when a neutron is converted into a proton or electron beta particle and an antineutrino. Gamma decay is occurs when a nucleus in a high energy state and it emits a gamma particle. It says predict the products of the nuclear equations. So in our first one we see that we have plutonium. It produces a helium in an alpha decay. Uh, and when we're balancing these out, the one thing that we want to focus on is the mass number on top has to equal on both sides. So we started with 242. We already have four over there. So subtract four and we go to our 238. Then on the bottom, we see the atomic number also has to match. So we have 94. We already have two over there. So 94 minus two gives us 90. Two. Now to find the symbol, or what the element actually is, is 92 protons, which is uranium. Uh, going backwards, uh, or the next one, we see we're going backwards. Uh, we have 32 on top on this side, and so we need 32 over here. Now we have 16 and minus 1, which 16 and minus 1 is a total of 15, so we need 15 over here and the element that has 15 protons would be phosphorus. Moving on to our next one we have californium um, and some element that produces uh, three neutrons because there's three right here and we see that we have three and the mass number is one so three times one would be three plus our 259 and so what we would get is we get 262. Now on this side, we also need 262, but we have 252 there, so that means we need a 10. On the bottom, we see we have zero and 103. And that means on our other side, we are going to need 103 as well. So that means that that would be five, because five plus 98 is 103, and that is boron. With iron, we see we have iron, which is 55. On this side, we have 55. So that means that has to be a zero. Here we have 26, and then we have 25. So that means that is a negative one. And we see that that is, put an E for a beta particle. And then oxygen, we see we have oxygen. We have 15 on this side. We have a zero, so we, this has to be 15. We have eight on this side. That means we need eight on this side. We already have one, so that means it is going to be seven. Seven protons would be nitrogen. Um, it says write um, a fusion reaction involving deuterium and carbon. So deuterium is um, hydrogen with two with a proton and one neutron, so a mass number of two. Um, and then we'll have carbon, so carbon 12. And carbon has six protons. And then it's a fusion reaction, so they're going to combine to make 14. Two plus 12 is 14. One plus six is seven. And then nitrogen. Next it says write a balanced nuclear um, equation for alpha decay, beta decay, and gamma decay. Some hints on this one. Alpha decay uh, produces a 
helium. A beta decay produces a beta particle, which is 0, negative 1. And a gamma decay uh, will produce a gamma particle, which has no mass. So any equation that we can uh, use using these three would be a proper equation. Uh, D, it says, what is, the what is conserved in a nuclear reaction? Um, energy is conserved. So we see that, that mass, that our mass is going to change. Um, and when our mass changes, um, it turns into energy. And so energy and mass is always conserved um, through uh, Einstein's equation of E equals mc squared. And so even in nuclear reactions, when we're producing a massive amount of energy, um, some of the mass is turned into that energy. Uh, moving on to nuclear equations, uh, talking about um, half-life. It says a 10 gram sample of um, iodine-131 has a half-life of eight days. And what half-life means is just the amount of time that it takes for half of the sample to decay. Now it was determined that the original sample was 80 grams. When was the iodine-131 created? And so we started with 80 and now we're at 10. So a half-life would be, one half-life is when 80 gets divided by 2 and it turns to 40 grams. And then that 40 grams, that's one half-life. And then another half-life would be when that 40 grams is divided by 2 and it gets turned into 20 grams. So that would be two half-lives. And when that 20 grams is divided by two and becomes 10 grams, it was three half-lives. So we have three half-lives, and if each half-life took eight days, eight times three would give us 24 days. Determine the half-life of the sample based on the graph. So a half-life is when we have half of its original mass. So if we started with 200, half of 200 would be 100. And we see that that hit right there. So we go down. And if this is in time in seconds, that's one, two, three seconds would be the half-life. How can a geologist use uranium to determine the age of a geological formation? Uh, so if we know the amount of time it takes for a single half-life of uranium, what we can do is we can look at the amount of uranium in a sample and then we can determine from its original composition how many half-lives it took to get there and we can determine the age of a sample. True or false, during a radioactive decay, the same amount of material degrades every half-life. Justify your answer. So let's think about this. Yes, half of the sample is decaying, but on our first half-life, we went from 80 to 40. Second half-life, we went from 40 to 20. Third half-life, we went from 20 to 10. So is it true that the same amount of material it degrades every half-life?